The rules and regulations of aviation are there to make flying as safe as possible, and for the vast majority of the time, it is. Air travel is by far the safest mode of transport. But what if the pilots were to simply ignore the rules? Safety record would mean nothing. And in the case of Air Maroc Express 439, this is clear, where the disregard for even the most basic safe practices is astounding. Royal Air Maroc is the national carrier of Morocco. It operates a fleet of 50 aircraft to over 100 destinations, along with one of its subsidiaries, Air Maroc Express, which flies ATR-72s on regional routes, most of which are short hops between Morocco's smaller airports and Air Maroc's main hubs. On the 9th of July 2018, an unnamed crew signs on to operate four flights, starting at their base in Casablanca, flying out to Al Hakima and Tangier, before returning home on the reverse legs. The captain is a 61-year-old veteran. He has 13,000 flight hours and has just recently switched on to the ATR after operating the Boeing 737. The first officer is less experienced with 1,000 flight hours. While occupying the jump seat is a company new hire. They are observing the crew to learn the standard operating procedures of Air Maroc. What they will see later though will be anything but standard. The weather at Casablanca was fairly clear, but there is fog hanging around Al Hakima. Normally, this would mean the pilots would plan to conduct an instrument approach to the runway, and if they didn't get visual by the minimum descent altitude, would consider diverting. However, we will soon see on this flight that the captain has no plans to divert. The first of some peculiar events begins as a terrain fault caution light illuminates in the cruise. The illumination of a terrain fault is almost a non-issue at this stage of the flight. It has probably occurred due to a degradation of the GPS signal to the enhanced ground proximity warning system. With the flight cruising at 16,000 feet, there is no danger of it hitting terrain anyway, and the fault rectifies itself before the plane commences descent. This occurrence though will play a critical role in the curious decision making of the pilots later in the day. It's only a few minutes later that the pilots commence their approach into Al Hakima. It is called a non-precision RNAV approach, where the aircraft tracks along GPS waypoints to the runway. They are only allowed to descend to 1,030 feet if they don't see the runway, but the captain has other ideas. As the ATR approaches the minimum descent altitude, instead of leveling off, the captain continues the descent. To be clear, one of the fundamentals of instrument flying in cloud is to absolutely never descend below your MDA, but the captain does so without a care in the world, at a rate of 1,000 feet per minute. 500. It isn't until just 60 feet above sea level, when the EGPWS warns the captain that he is literally about to crash. that he pitches up and adds power, descending as low as 45 feet, before hanging at around 100 feet until he visually acquires the runway and lands as though it is all in a day's work. It is difficult to explain just how unsafe and how irrational this approach was from the captain, but the worst is still yet to come. Instead of filing safety reports on what were several rules he had just broken, the captain and his crew continue about their day, flying the next short leg to Tangier without a vent. It is now time though to return to the fogged in Al Hakima, and with the low overcast clouds still hanging around, the crew may have to perform another special feat. 
This time it will be the first officer flying. The captain briefs him on the ground. Okay. If the runway is not in sight at the MDA, we will descend until a height of 400 feet, which will then be maintained until the runway is in view. If the runway is still not in sight at 2 miles from the VOR, we will stop the approach and make a go around. For this flight, the pilots are planning for the VOR approach. This is similar to the Yarnav which they flew previously, but it works off a ground-based aid instead of GPS. The minimum descent altitude is lower, at 760 feet. However, the captain is again going to disregard this. He plans to descend to 400 feet. At the very least, this time he is planning to go around if the runway is not inside at 2 miles. What he will come up with during the actual approach though is anyone's guess. As the crew prepare for departure, the first officer pipes up with a suggestion. The GPWS was untimely during the first flight. It was. Perhaps we could disable it? Yes, then we can avoid those alarms during descent. Let's get out the DDM. The captain consults the dispatch deviation manual, more commonly known as the minimum equipment list. The first officer has raised the idea that they should turn off the EGPWS. Again, it is difficult to explain just how inappropriate this decision is. The minimum equipment list is meant to be used when a system is faulty. It allows an aircraft to fly with minor defects in a way which won't compromise safety. But the crew is simply choosing to turn off the ground proximity warning system. It is not faulty, they just don't want it to annoy them when they fly dangerously close to terrain. Maybe, their minds are thinking back to the terrain fault message earlier in the day, but there are simply no grounds to MEL the entire system due to the occurrence of a single fault. So Air Maroc Express 439 takes off from Tangier for Al Hakima, with 54 passengers and 4 crew. It climbs to 13,000 feet for what will just be 6 minutes in the cruise. There is no doubt there is a steep authority gradient between the captain and FO, and this can be seen in the few excerpts from the cockpit voice recorder which are provided in the accident report. Descend to flight level 060, request the BOR approach for runway 17. Royal Air Maroc 439. Okay, so you are flying this approach. Yes, sir. We will fly directly onto the final approach track. Yes? You fly, I will take care of monitoring the speed and the water. Right. Soon after, Flight 439 is descending towards Al Hakima. As they pass 5,000 feet, the captain begins to put his bold plan into action. Okay, approach checklist is complete. I'm going to deactivate the GPWS. Okay. You'll need more flap to increase descent. Start reducing speed. Royal Air Maroc 439. Wind calm. Visibility 4000 in mist. Overcast at 600. Temperature 23. Dew point 23. Q&H 1016. 400 feet, said. The crew said they're heading for the runway, and before they know it, are speeding down the approach. Their speed at the final approach fix is 80 knots higher than normal. Nevertheless, they continue as planned, and the first officer requests for the landing gear down. Royal Air Maroc 439, fully established. Roger. Clear to land runway 17. Landing gear down. Okay. Go, go to the limit. There, at a thousand feet, we see the ground. The captain urges the first officer to increase descent rate, and he gradually increases it to 1800 feet per minute, excessively high for the final portion of an approach. As the autopilot captures the selected altitude of 400 feet, the runway is still not in sight. 500 feet, we see the ground. We continue to 300. 400. The captain sets the autopilot back to vertical speed mode and selects 1,000 feet per minute. With the aircraft at just 400 feet, he seems blind to how extraordinarily unsafe what he's doing is. 
We keep going now. Keep going. Go. Go. We keep going. 100. This is not normal. No ticket and manual. Oh yeah, this is fine. The first officer has disconnected the autopilot and is pulling back on the stick, but the captain pushes the nose down, overpowering his colleague. Moments later, they strike the water. Oh shit. Shit! They hit twice in quick succession. The first with an impact force of 3.2 Gs, and the second at 3.9. The captain releases his pitch down pressure, and the first officer is able to climb away, both probably in absolute disbelief that they and their 54 passengers are still alive. Royal Air Maroc 439 in the go-around. Request diversion to Nader. Royal Air Maroc 439, roger. State reason for go-around? Uh, we had a bird strike, 439. The captain somehow thinks he can use the excuse of a bird strike to explain the damage to the aircraft. But when it arrives in Nador, it is obvious that such severe damage could not be caused by birds. There is serious damage to the lower fuselage and main landing gear, while the nose gear is also badly damaged. Thankfully though, all 58 occupants of the ATR-72 are uninjured after the incident. While Air Maroc did make several changes to address the deliberate disabling of the GPWS, as well as introduce new stable approach training, there really is not much else to take away from this incident. The pilots deliberately violated the rules of aviation, which are there to keep themselves and their passengers safe. While airlines do have monitoring programs to address the issue of pilots with unsafe attitudes, the program at Air Maroc must have been inadequate, because clearly, these two pilots slipped through the cracks.